Hey, Bill DeWeese here from voice-over-training.org. And yes, it really is me. You may not recognize me. I am in glasses today. I was, uh, I was down to my last pair of contacts, and I accidentally bumped my eye with my hand and knocked my contact out. And it was the last pair that I had. I meant to order some before then, but I hadn't, so... I'm waiting for my contact. So anyhow, just so in case you don't recognize me, it is me. And today talking about, and this is something we all deal with, those of us who record from home have our voiceover business in our home, and most of us do. I mean, you know, there are occasionally you'll come across the person who rents outside office space or studio space, but most of, most of us are set up in our home. So we have to deal with distractions. So today we're talking about dealing with distractions in our home voiceover business because there are the family, you know, the family issues, husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, children, relatives, dogs. You've got the noises of toilets and dishwashers and, and garbage trucks and low-flying airplanes and the neighbor's uh, lawnmower and snowblower, if you're in the Chicago area, and, and on and on it goes. So, you know, how do you deal with that? Well, first of all, I used to absolutely freak out over that stuff. And when I say freak out, I mean, I, I think I kept it bottled up inside, but I was always... I always felt like I was stressed. I was always so afraid that something crazy was going to happen in the middle of a recording session. And so my first bit of advice is simply this, accept it. I mean, we all deal with it, right? I mean, there's and there's no way you can completely protect yourself against every eventuality. It's going to happen. You're going to be in the middle of a record. I was just in a recording session the other day with a Fortune 500 client. It was a phone-directed session. And my son flushed the toilet, which is right next to my studio, right in the middle of the session. And because I failed to communicate to my son that I was going into recording session, which I typically do. And uh, so I was so embarrassed and I, and I apologized. And it's funny, the client laughed and, and was telling me about some problems that, that she had had trying to conduct work from her home with her children. So, you know, most times people understand those kind of things, but, you know, stuff happens. So what can you do? Well, number one, as I just mentioned, communicating, and that's one thing I, I always try to do. If I have a session where I'm working with somebody via ISD and our phone patch, I'll let my family know and say, you know, between this time and this time, I will be in a recording session with a client. So I would appreciate anything and everything you can do to keep the noise down and to be quiet, keep the television down, et cetera. And, and since we have that, you know, they have that knowledge up front, you know, we can, we can work with that. Also, do everything you can in your power to isolate sound from your workspace. And this is not 100% foolproof. I know that. Uh, I now work in a whisper room, which is set up inside of a walk-in closet in our master bedroom, which is actually an interior closet, so it's not against outside walls. But even so, I cannot completely isolate myself from all sound. But it's done a really good job. It, it, unless there's something really loud going on outside, like sirens passing, that kind of thing, the outside, normally it's stuff inside I have to worry about. The outside stuff, not so much of an issue. But do everything you can to, to isolate that sound. And that might mean over time, you know, you add things. Like, for instance, I did not immediately start with a whisper room. Uh, I waited for a few years after I'd started my business, and I found this half price on Craigslist. So, you know, I, I was always looking for a way, and I continue to look for ways to upgrade my equipment and my sound. And so, you know, continue to do that with the understanding that there will be noise that you just cannot, you know, you, you can't eliminate. Um, Coming up on summer break is when I, and when I normally have my biggest time because the kids are out of school and uh, my two sons are in college and they'll be hanging out here at home during the summertime. And I also have um, a grandson. My, my daughter has a, a one-year-old uh, boy that she brings, and my daughter's my assistant. She brings my grandson into work a lot. And so, you know, we're, you know we always have that kind of stuff to deal with. So in the summertime, I realize that it's going to be kind of crazy. So, again, I communicate to my kids up front and say, okay, look, here's the deal. Your dad is busy working, you know, between, I start, actually, I start work at 8, typically hit the studio by 9, and then, you know, work a regular business day until 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And I tell my kids, you have to have your showers done by 9, because at 9 o'clock, my microphone's on, and I'm working. So we have that arrangement up front. I also ask them uh, not to flush toilets, to run the dishwasher. Not that my kids, not that I'm ever in danger of my kids running the dishwasher, but in case my wife would happen to do that or the, or the laundry, I ask them not to run those appliances during that time because that stuff, even with me being on the second floor of the house, 
that somehow you know works its way that sound easily works its way through the house into my studio so any flushing toilets or running water that kind of stuff i easily pick up on but again we just have that we have that agreement up front and that communication i let them know what's happening also i try to find times when everybody is going to be out of the house and if i know there's a there's a time that everybody's going to be gone that's a good time for me to work on maybe i'm working on an audio book or some long-form narration. So I try to take advantage of those opportunities. Also, I think it's a good idea to communicate with your neighbors and let them know what you do for a living. For example, uh, and by the way, it's, you know, my neighbors mow their lawn, you know, snow blow and all that kind of stuff. And it's not usually an issue. Um, and if it is, it's normally something I can wait and pause and wait for them to finish before I continue, unless I have a scheduled se- ISDN session or phone patch session. But last summer, I had a recording session with a studio in Nashville, and I'm near Chicago, and it was via ISDN. And uh, I'm getting ready to start the session in about 15 minutes. I noticed my next door neighbor, who do- he had no clue what I do for a living. He was getting ready to mow his lawn. So I went out and said, uh, look, if you don't mind, I've got a recording set. I record commercials and, and various things for a living. And if you could wait until you know this time, I would greatly appreciate it. And number one, I think he was shocked to know that I wasn't unemployed. Because, <laughs> because I'm the guy who never leaves my house. I walk out to the mailbox in my slippers, and and, and I'm just pretty convinced that a number of my, my neighbors think that I that, you know that I'm that I'm unemployed. And he had no idea what I did for a living, but he was very understanding and very cooperative. And not everybody's going to be cooperative, but if you're on good terms with your neighbors, uh, most times they will be more than happy to to work with you. So don't be afraid to approach them and just say, hey, this this is my situation. If you can help me you know, I would greatly appreciate it. And then my last bit of advice is this, don't stress. You know, we all, we all are working out of home studios. We all have these challenges. Uh, Although we want to minimize it when it comes to clients, obviously we want to be professional. Everybody's dealing with this and clients who work with home talent frequently understand that stuff happens, even though we try our best to make it not happen. So um, don't get an ulcer over it. Just try to minimize the damage as much as you can up front by scheduling and communicating with your family and finding those moments when people are gone from your house to take advantage of getting longer projects done. Hey, if you're looking for the edge to get your voiceover business moving forward, if you want, if you have not yet moved into six figures with your voiceover business and you're looking for the strategies to do that, let me encourage you to stop by my website, which is voice-over-training.org and download my free audio program, Six Figure Voiceover Secrets. And hopefully it will give you some of the information that will help to inspire and motivate and most importantly, equip you to take your voiceover business to the next level. Thanks for joining me. All the best, and I look forward to talking to you soon.